This is question three of the 2019 Orbury Level Leave Insert, paper one. Now you can find an image to this question in the description below if you don't have a set of papers yourself. And this question is made up of two parts. Part one asks us to understand the function a little bit, but mainly just to draw this function out, this cubic function. And then using that picture, they're gonna ask us a couple of questions about it. And then in part B, they're gonna ask us how to differentiate this function. That's actually a little bit related to the image. They, they don't ask us to relate the two, but I'll point that out as I answer the question. On the board, I've copied out the relevant uh, information. We have the function here, the cubic function, minus x cubed plus four x squared plus x minus two. And they gave us this table. And I seem to be missing number three. Let's see, that is uh, 10. They gave us that to begin with. That said, uh, that was probably a little bit of help to, to hold the student's hand a little bit. They often do more than this. They'll often ask you to put it, to find f, um, f minus one first before asking you to fill this table out. But either way, they will ask a question very similar to this nearly every year. And I'll go through how to answer it now. Basically a function is we put an x number into this function and we get an answer out. And these two are related. These are our x, y. These are our x and y. Or sometimes we just say x and fx. Function in, function out. So let me go through how to fill in this table. They tell us x is equal to minus 1. So what we need to do is put x equal to minus 1 into this function. So we simply, everywhere we see an x, f, this x, replace it, equals minus so we see an x here, we just put in minus one. For safety, I, you put in brackets every time. It's important when we have a minus one, otherwise we could lose this minus in here. It's not important when we have a plus number, but I'll go ahead and put it in for the plus numbers because it never hurts. It never hurts to put that bracket in for an extra bit of safety. So minus one again, we're putting in for this, this x here. Um, everything else stays the same. Only the x is changing. We're putting minus one in for it. The brackets is just for safety. And minus one, minus two. Now at this point, I know a lot of students who just use a calculator, and that is fine. Hell, I think a lot of um, college students just use a calculator. Do not worry if you're gonna make mistakes doing this in your head, do not do it in your head, use a calculator. I'd like you to do both. Do it, get to a point where you can do this, but always check on a calculator, it's no harm. So, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do this. We have minus one to the power of three. That means there's three minus ones. That's minus by minus by minus, three minuses. And a fourth minus out here. So four minuses make a plus. One by one by one makes a one. Um, and next we have, oh, let me not put the plus in first. We have two minuses make a plus, plus by plus make a plus. Let's deal with the numbers now, one by one. It's so one by four is four. And here we have a minus by a plus, makes a minus, sorry, minus multiplied. I should be every one of these, minus multiplied by minus makes a plus. Not minus plus or minus doesn't. Um, so minus multiplied by plus, they're multiplying because there's a bracket there. Minus multiplied by plus makes a minus one. And then we have minus two at the end. Again, go ahead and put this in a calculator. But we have one, five, one plus four. 5, 4, take away f. So 1 plus 4, 5. 5 minus 1, 4. 4 minus 2, 2. The answer here is equal to 2. So f minus 1 is equal to 2. So we put 2 in. And we just need to do that for each of them. I'm going to start going a little faster, but uh, we just need to do that for each of them. Well, the next one is actually quite trivial. But I'll do it out the identical way. Minus zero cubed plus four zero squared plus zero minus two. This is just zero. Zero times four is just zero. Zero is just zero. That all equals minus two. That equals minus two. Let's do another one. F, um, yeah, I'll just fill them in after this one. We'll do, uh, let's do a harder one. We'll do number four here. F. 4 equals minus, there's still a minus here. Replace the x as a 4. Again, I'll put the brackets in for safety. 
plus 4 times 4 squared plus 4 minus 2. Again, go ahead and use a calculator. You'll probably need a calculator for 4 to the power of 3, which is 64. But maybe you wouldn't, because we have 4 by 4 by 4. This is 4 to the power of 3. 4 to the power of 1 times 4 to the power of 2 is 4 to the power of 3. Plus, minus. They destroy each other. They're just gone. You don't have to do that. It'll all be working the calculator anyway. 4 minus 1 is equal to 2. So that one is 2. Let's see, what are the other ones? 1 comes out as a 2. If you do it the same way, do it the same way. You put 2 in, it comes out as 8. Should be an identical way there. Okay, so that's um, filled that table. You've already got plenty of marks. Next thing we need to do is graph it. And again, they will ask this question, I think, every year. I, I can't imagine a year they haven't asked this question or a question similar to it. So how do we graph? We have x and y. This is what the fx is, x and fx. We put what number we put in, what number we got out. So if we put in minus one, we got out two. So let me, you, you need to be very careful when doing this. You need to use a ruled paper. Um, hopefully you'll have the exam yourself. If you are just doing it like I'm doing and copying um, the ruled part, you need to be careful when doing this. I can't do it too carefully on a board, I'm afraid. With a pen and paper, you should be able to do a lot more. Use a ruler, make sure these are all spaced correctly. Mine are not. So just be warned about that, because especially because my answer is gonna come out as a little bit wrong. Okay, so there's one point, zero and two. Let's go to zero on the x, that is here. Oh, let me not put a dot there, let me put a zero though. Um, zero is here and minus two is here. There's my dot, there's my second point. Let's go to one and to two is about here. Let's go to two and eight. Let's see, it looks about here, <coughs> about here to me. 3 and 10, around there, 4 and 2 is about here. Okay, again, you've just got lots of marks. Each one of these points, they'll, I think they'll probably just give you one mark for every point, I'm guessing. One mark, one mark, one mark, one mark, one mark, that's five. Another six points here, they'll probably give you five for those six. Um, so if you get five out, well, if you get six out of six, you'll get five points. I'm guessing now, I'm not sure how their uh, marking scheme, I haven't looked at it too closely. Now you need to fill them out. Let me just show you what you can do wrong over here, okay? I don't wanna do the wrong answer on here. So we have point, 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 point. Here is a wrong answer. But it's an okay wrong answer, but it's, it's a wrong answer still. They do not want to see sharp edges. This is, it's not the worst thing you could do, I guess. Much worse answer would be something that looked like this. Um, you could forget points entirely. That'd be a worse answer. But still, we do not want to see these sharp edges. That's actually fairly important. The exam will take marks away for these sharp edges. Just one or two marks probably, I think. What they want to see is something like this. A smooth curve. <laughs> Hopefully try and hit every point. Use a pencil to do this so you can rub it out and try it one or two times. Do not panic though of getting it perfect. This is good enough for the exam. What I've done here is good enough for the exam. You do not need to be perfect. You just need to show that it's a smooth turn. For example, this, this could have looked like, uh, let me draw another one here. Here's a point here. This could have looked like this. We don't know. We're not sure, so there could be different answers here. So it has to go through each point, but it could have gone much higher than this point. It could have gone lower than this point here. It could have gone higher than this point here. We're not sure. From this information, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I would need to, to differentiate it some. They, all the exam wants to see is the smooth edges. You, the, the hump could have been a bit more over to the left or right, a bit more to the left of right, but they do want to see a hump. And only two humps. That's important, because understanding it's a cubic equation would only have two humps. So this is the full marks for um, part A1. Part A2 then, we'll keep this here. 
asks us to, um, let me zoom in by moving my head closer, asks me to estimate the roots to this equation. Estimate the solution to this equation here. That is when it crosses the x-axis. Here is one answer and here is another. Now, just, um, just because my drawing is not too good, I would like to give you the correct answers. The correct answer you should find, this one looks okay actually, should be minus, well let me come down here, minus 0 0.7. The correct answer, this, my, mine looks a bit off here, should be 0 0.7, plus 0 0.7. Now, do not panic. If you were to get minus 0 0.8, and plus 0 0.5, you can still get full marks. The examiner, the, what the examiner is looking for is the shape correctly, your points correctly. If your curve was a little over to the right or a little over to the left and giving you that different number, that does not matter to them. It is the rough answer they are looking for here. If you, if you were asked to do it, get an exact answer, we would have done it algebraically. But the drawing is just giving us this rough answer so it does not matter if you're plus or minus bit. Once you did everything correctly, the examiner is looking for a mark here on your exam and the number there to match the answer you give. Part two, the answer should be x is equal minus 0 0.7, x is equal 0 0.7. What they're looking for is these numbers to look the same as the number you wrote there. You would lose marks if you wrote different numbers here than here, even if they were correct. If you see the person beside you has this and you try and copy them, if your exam didn't, you would lose marks for it. Okay, so that's part A. Part B, how about I rub this out here, we'll keep the drawing because it's, it's related slightly, but I'll rub this part out and give us room. Okay, part B here asks us to find the value for x for which f double prime x is equal to zero. What this means is the second derivative. First derivative is one prime, second derivative is two primes. So find the value for x for which the second derivative is equal to zero. First, I'd like to give you, because they could ask this, um, I, I would doubt it, it'd be more an honors level question, but they could ask us to guess the answer from the drawing, to, to estimate the answer. When the second derivative is greater than zero, we get this shape. We get this sort of shape. That means things are increasing relatively. It's going down, but it's going down less each time. It's going down, but it's, it's trying to move up. It's going down, but it's trying to move up. It's going down, but it's trying to move up. It's going up, it's trying to move up faster. It's going up, but it's trying to move up faster. So it's all about that trying part. It's trying to go up. It's trying to go up. It's trying to go up even more. And when fx is, uh, when the second derivative is, what's this, greater than, when second derivative is less than zero, we get this shape. It's trying to go down more. It's going up, but it's trying to go down more. It's going up, but it's trying to go down more. It's going down, it's trying to go down even more. We get this sort of shape there. So when the second derivative is equal to zero, we're in between these two. There is the answer roughly here. So the answer is somewhere about one and a half. Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't guarantee my, how good my drawing is. Let me see what the actual answer is. Actually, it's not too bad. It's somewhere around one and a half. Okay, let me do the, but that will, the examiner I would like to think would give you a mark or two for an attempt there, but it would be unusual a student would know this and not be able to do the question. So let me show you how to do the actual question. So we know fx is equal to this. Let me just write it out again. Uh, minus x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 2. So how do we differentiate? You need to remember how to differentiate. We, we deal with the x's. The, the power on the x, this number multiplies. So we have a minus here. Multiplied by a 3. x is still there. And the power becomes 1 less. Two. That's how we differentiate, and we can do each of them separately. So the power comes down front, and it loses one. Let's see, the power comes down front, so we get four multiplied by two. Uh, let's just, yeah, let's just skip to that. Four times two is eight. The x loses one of the powers. x to the power of one. 
We don't have to write ones. We usually leave them blank. This one, there is a one up here, remember? We usually leave it blank, but one multiplies it out front. X to the power of uh, one minus one is zero. We're just left with the one. Now lots of students just remember we're left with the number in front of the x, which is a one here. But there's an x to the power of zero, which is also one, disappears. This guy here, more confusing, there's an x to the power of zero. So the zero multiplies. Really what we're left with is nothing, plus zero. A better way to think of that though is that this is a constant number. Because remember what differentiation is, when x changes, what happens to this guy? When x changes, this guy turns into this. When x changes, this happens. When x changes, this happens. When x changes, what happens at 2? Well, nothing. Nobody cares what happens at 0. Nothing happens at 2. Um, so that's the answer. That's, uh, that's the first derivative. That's differentiated one time. Let's differentiate two times. Or just one more from this point. The 2 comes down and multiplies the 3. We get a 6. Minus 6. x loses one of its parts. The 1 comes down and multiplies the 8, we get an 8. x loses one of the powers. So we're down to x to the power of 0, which is, which is 1. Sorry, I nearly said 0. x to the power of 0 is 1. So it's 1 multiplied by 8, just 8. Again, what happens at 1 when x moves? Absolutely nothing. He disappears. This is our answer. This is the second derivative. You've got yourself plenty of marks right now. This is the second derivative. Don't throw away the final few marks. Because they tell us the second derivative is equal to zero. You found out the second derivative is equal to this. Let's put them together. The second derivative is definitely equal to itself. So this must equal this. You've got yourself another mark. Final mark, don't throw it away, is, is simple algebra. We've been doing since probably we're 12 years old. So let, let's not throw it away. Let's solve this here. Solve for x. We get minus 6x. Um, take 8 from both sides. That disappears. And we get a minus 8 on the right side. Let's divide both sides by minus 6. Divide by minus 6. That guy disappears. Minus 8 divided by minus 6. Let's see. A minus divided by a minus makes a plus. 8 and 6, uh, I guess we can make that smaller as 4 and 3. Okay, so that's our final answer. Let's write it one more time. x is equal 4 divided by 3. Which, just to go back to my guess, is about here. It's about here the exact answer. So my guess wasn't too bad. It's when this shape turns into this shape. When this shape turns into this shape. That's what the second derivative of equaling 0 means. All right, that's, uh, that's everything in that question, I believe. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And um, I'll see you for question four, hopefully.